Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I'm gonna me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. Y'all used to hate on all of my moves, but now niggas on it. Y'all used to bait me on me and my views, but now niggas on it. I used to tell them I'm gonna me a show, but now niggas on it. Her homies on it. Your homies on it. What up, what up? We back. Realist Podcast Summer. Reporting live on Revolt Podcast Network. It's your boy, Chad Fane. I'm mad, makes me sick. <clears throat> we are here once again at the Frame Complex. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, uh, Frame Philly, upstairs in the lounge. They also got the uh, restaurant downstairs. They actually got a day party uh, going on right now. Brunch, John going crazy. They had to close the door and ble- bleach out some of that, some of the sound. You know what I'm saying? They getting it popping down that John. But make sure you, uh, you know, you contact them on a on a gram at Frame PHL for uh, private parties, brunch bookings, dinner bookings. They open every week between Wednesday to Sunday. Uh, you know, for various things. So Wednesday through Sunday, they have dinner service. And then on the weekend, Saturday, Sunday, they got brunch. So if y'all want to come through, party, you want to book a private party, dinner party, or actual party, birthday party, whatever it is, you can contact them at Frame PHL on social media. We are here once again, man, on Revolt Podcast Network to talk about all of the latest and greatest, all of the happenings and, you know, pop culture, world news, all that different stuff, man. It's a lot going on right now. Uh, before we get into that, I do want to say for any additional content, make y'all make sure y'all subscribe to us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash official TRPE right now. We are doing free, 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 free 99 seven day uh, memberships on our VIP tier. Be able to go on there, check out all of the back catalog content. Been on Patreon going on three years now. So it's a lot of content on there for you to be able to, you know, scope through whatever in seven days and y'all can get a feel for uh you know, for what we're doing over there, man, on that additional platform. Also, Sunday, December 17th, we got a live show coming up. First time ever, TRP, Holiday Hangover, Poetry, Art, Comedy, Live Podcast. We're going to be hosting. We got some dope talent that's going to be on the event. Uh, free food, uh, top shelf liquor from Grand Coromino, Hennessy, uh, Black Oak Wine Club, uh, Mishka Vodka, Pure Fuel Energy, just a ton of different stuff going on, man. So make sure I get y'all tickets right now. Go to universe.com slash TRPE to get y'all tickets. Use promo code TRPE for 10% off at checkout. Go in there, buy like 50 tickets, and then that'll be that. Yeah. So starting off, I think uh, something that I definitely want to get into kicking off is just uh, giving Young Dolph a shout-out. It's the two-year anniversary of Dolph passing. Was a tragedy. Was you know super shocking at the time that it happened. Uh, you know, really caught everybody off guard. And in the wake of that situation, there's been a lot of rumors, a lot of misinformation. You got people that's charged. You got people that's not charged. That's deceased. That people saying are the actual culprits or whatever. But um, you know, essentially, it looks like there's going to be uh, you know some sort of closure to that situation, if not already. So I do want to uh, you know salute Dolph always. Uh, somebody that was absolutely big on the independent grind, kind of took what Gucci Man was doing early on and really took it to new heights, turning down, you know, big multi-million dollar deals and situations like that. And, you know, in order to keep his ownership and his independence kind of in the same vein of like a Nipsey Hustle. So uh, long live Dolph, always want to definitely salute to him and everybody from Paper Route, uh, Jay Fizzle, uh, Daddy O, uh, Key Glock, everybody that I met from Paper Route over the years, man, salute to them guys. Um, and most importantly, Dolph's family as well. So I think that uh, that's a good way to start off the show. Yeah, I'm not going to, like, front. I never really got into the young Dolph. That, like, you know, I just, I don't understand how you have time to listen to this much music. I have a lot of mental bandwidth. No, no, I'm not talking about the bandwidth to accept it. I mean, like, time, just in general, to, like, hear all these. Like, I'll be honest with you, there be artists, people be like, yo, so I'll be like, Ooh. Man, somebody posted a joint yesterday on Twitter. It was like, one artist got to go on all their music. It was a block of non-artists. I was like, who are these niggas? With Tommy Davis. Yeah, like, like, who are these niggas? <laughs> who are these niggas? <laughs> like, yo, straight. The, the, this past week, apparently something happened with Meg Thee Stallion and... Oh, a party. Did you know there were multiple parties? Yeah, it's Because whenever I hear the name party, I'm thinking Drake's guy. Well, there's party and there's party. Listen... <laughs> And when I heard party, <laughs> I'm thinking like, oh, Drake man messed with her. Yeah. Come to find out, this is another person. Yeah, I'm just he's, like, oh. he's Cardi B. He's one of Cardi B's contributors, writers, or whatever like 
that. He wrote, I believe. But uh, that's what they Yellow. always was like. He was a writer because Party Next Door is a writer. That's yeah. what I, I just assumed it was. A, so when I seen the picture, I'm like, that ain't Party Next Door. That's a that's somebody from the Texans. Yeah, like, he looked like a football. player. Yeah, no, the nigga like six five. Yeah, like he's like a football player. Um, I guess we could kind of start with that. I wasn't going to go there first, but like, fuck it, you broached the topic. Uh, there's a huge like gender war going on right now. On social media every, every, tied to know, that situation. Everything is a fucking gender war on social media at this point. I'm kind of sick of it. I, like, I'm be honest with you, bro. Everything doesn't need to be. I mean, it's, it's you know. Like, we can't meet in the 50-yard line ever. No, absolutely not. That's too. That's, like, you know how the Super Bowl would be like, it'd be a red end zone yeah. and a purple end zone for the two. It's just like. How, how could you, when the shade room is ending their caption with, let's argue? Like, how how could you ever meet in the middle when the biggest platform in urban culture is uh, divisive and it's telling get, motherfuckers. We're going to get to Drake later. But Drake <laughs> said, open them blinds. Get out of the shade yeah. room. Like, yeah, so like, like, how, shit, how could you man. find middle ground when, you know, the. the the main thing that people are engaging in billions probably of impressions a month at this point are telling y'all to argue and debate and what you think and all of that. And it's like, I'm here to tell you a lot of y'all don't deserve to have an opinion on shit. You haven't lived enough life. You don't have enough experience. You're not measured enough to even give a a reasonable response on shit. And so many people are just going to automatically speak to their biases first before they do anything. And they're not even going to examine the situation and be like, oh, I could see the other side of the argument. I saw a girl the other day, her thumb, I guess she, I don't know if she lost her thumb okay, or something, but you, it wasn't much thumb. All right. There. Mini thumb. I don't know what was going on, but you, sh- she had her phone up on the counter and was typing on it <laughs> like a typewriter. And I was like, damn, taking their thumbs don't even work. <laughs> no. <laughs> no more, because they still going to get it in. And then they still got voice yeah, activation. Yeah, <laughs> man, they still going to get it in. <laughs> hey, Siri, comments, open, open, open the shade room. Go to, yeah, go to the third to last post. Uh, Type, shut up, you bitch ass nigga. Yeah, it's so, rough. So you're going to have to fill me in, because I, I just saw the, the headline. I don't really understand. Yeah, so essentially. What was going on? So, with, so essentially, this has been like a, a, a you know, a, the, the, the timeline, the main timeline is going back to the Tory Lane situation. Party, Partisan Fontaine was essentially her boyfriend immediately after the fallout from the Tory situation. Um, he's tall, he's handsome, he's 6'5", he got feminist tattooed on his back, and all of the bitches lost their minds like, oh, this is a real man, and a real man pick you up when a leprechaun let you down, and all this old hip shit, and now those same women are turning on him for speaking his truth and responding to something that Megan said. So... Throughout the course of their relationship, there's rumors, this, this, that. And the third, he decided to take the road of, I'm going to believe what my woman tells me. I'm going to believe women. I'm going to believe what my woman tells me. And <laughs> she says she ain't fuck these niggas. They lying on her and all of that. And then throughout the, the Tory Lane's trial, a lot of stuff started to come out that yeah. she, like, was lying about and not being, you know, all the way forthright. And I think that started the, like, you know, the downward trajectory of their relationship because it's like, like Drake said, I never asked for all your secrets. They just came to me and contradicted everything that you claim to be. Like, so it's one of them moments. And it's like, yo, I rather you love me for who I am. They hate me for who I am than love me for who I'm not. And Meg got jammed up in a situation that, let's keep it real, a lot of people, not just women, a lot of people would rather show you they representative and go to go to the grave with the lie rather than face the backlash in the moment and have the tough conversation and be like, so what you going to do? Yeah. yeah, I fucked this nigga. I fucked that nigga. I was single. I was living my life, whatever, whatever. I, I fucked all them niggas. What we going to do? Is that if that's a deal breaker, I understand that. I respect where you're coming from. But, you know, for whatever reason, she wanted to be covered by this man. She felt safe with him, whatever, whatever. And then ultimately her Lack of honesty came back to bite her in the ass, and then, you know, it led to their fallout. The mistake she made was on the new song, Cobra, she basically insinuated, not insinuated, she flat out said, he, my, my nigga got, my ex nigga got caught getting head in my bed. That's just a flat statement. There's nothing before it. There's nothing after it. There's no context. There's no world building. There's no, oh, well, he found out. Them 10 niggas I said I didn't fuck, I fucked, and then he cheated back. So 
the automatic thing was, oh, this nigga's foul, and can you believe? And then they start digging into his shit, and then it was like, oh, he was dealing with the girl Jada Kingdom, the uh, the reggae singer or whatever, and then that became a whole debate. Who would you, who batter Meg or Jada? Again, gender wars. Divisive shit that goes on online, and that went on for about a week, and then that died out, and then the other day, like two days ago, he drops a snippet to a record Basically, like, he put out a diss record, essentially. You know what I mean? Okay. Clearing the air. And on the song, he basically says, like, yo, everything you told me was bullshit. Like, you a bad person. You, uh, you know, you got surgery and started uh, making workout videos. You're a liar. You're deceptive. You fucked your producer. And you, and you had me hanging with the nigga, shaking his hand, and you was fucking him the whole time. All of the other niggas that said they had sex with you, they had sex with you. You are a bad person. And essentially, like, excoriated her for misleading him throughout the course of the relationship and said, I never got head in your bed. Like, you did that for, for like, a moment in a record. And now the same girls that were saying he's a king are like, you bitch-ass nigga, you ain't no alpha male. I know real alpha males. I'll be around alpha males. And they don't come in the room and got to say they're alpha male. And it started this big, huge powder <laughs> keg of a conversation because men are on party side of basically saying like, yo, let's stop the car for a second and just examine the situation. He is responding to something that she said. Right. Why does he automatically have to take the high road if his truth is that's not how it fucking went down? Mm -hmm. And now it's like the same reason why people love you, they ultimately will hate you, mm -hmm. and now he's dealing with all of the backlash of that. So I think that's a good summation of where we are now. So now, this is the social media shit. So now old posts are resurfacing from the, when they first got together, because niggas, men clowned him from the door. Mm -hmm. You're bugging. Like, like, the rumors are the facts. I don't care what she's telling you. You're bugging. You're going to end up regretting this shit. Because he was actively trying to fight the baby, trying to fight Tory Lanez. Like, he was yeah. trying to meet, link, link up with niggas oh, and man. get it on defending his girl, and it was all based on a lie. So can you imagine the amount of egg on this nigga's face now? Yeah. When, like, you was... I you was trying to be Spartacus and out here on yeah, Gladiator Tom, and yeah. then it's like Leonidas in your way, through. and it was yeah. all it was all bullshit. I, I I spoke with somebody who I trust, and you know we 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 real cool, and he basically was like, "Yo, people are upset at him about the diss record because I didn't even listen to it." But he mm -hmm. was like, "He really comes off like like he's hurt, disappointed, like just super, just hurt and disappointed, and like yeah. almost like fractured emotionally yeah. because it's like." Yo, I was fucking with you. And if you've ever been, like, true story to what you just said, like, I believed a woman once. That's just real. Yeah. Like, I literally said, Kanye said it best. I was in love with being I, in, I, 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 was, I was satisfied being in, in love, love with, with the lie. lie. And as, it, the same way men can't understand women, women can't understand men. Yeah. And nobody really tries to, one, because you can't. Two, there's no point. You said you just can't. Yeah, the, 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 once you get an understanding, the rubric changes. The, ru the syllabus changes. It, that's it's just, like, that's it's just, like, oh, no, you ain't get the updated syllabus yeah, in your email? You 10.4. <laughs> you need 10.5. Yeah, like, no, yeah. this no, this is wrong. <laughs> and as a man, when you trust a woman and let your guard down and you become vulnerable to her in that situation where y'all are having conversations and doing things that you think this shit would never exist with no one else, yeah. and then you come to find out, like, Oh damn, that wasn't me on some individuality shit. I was number eight. Exactly. It was assembly line. Y yeah, that shit. It, it have you like. Yeah, wait that's, a minute. You almost be wanting to go to the <laughs> niggas. Like, explain this to me, bro. Yeah, let's have a players <laughs> meeting. <laughs> I, I was like, like dog. You trying to pick a uh, piece together timelines yeah, and shit because you like it's, it's almost like how I said. How do you hear all this music? Yeah. You like, bitch. How did you have time? Like, like how? You was at the Grammys? You was at the VMAs? It doesn't it make sense. the BET Awards. So, you know... Motherfuckers gonna get it in, though. You know, everybody comes to these situations with their traumas and their dramas, and they mm -hmm. just throw the shit out. And I told Lee last night, I'm like, yo, one thing I've seen, and we gonna get into it, is the goalpost moving that goes on in the culture. Nigga. If we like you, bring that goalpost in here. If we don't like you, man, that goalpost is so fucking far away. <laughs> Rip that motherfucker out of the ground. We, we, you don't we, get that nut ass goalpost. Shit, out of you need a compass <laughs> to get to that fucking goalpost. And it just be insane. Like, if you are, there is no woman who's a Meg Thee Stallion fan 
that can look at this objectively and say, damn, he probably really hurt. It's impossible. Yeah. You're too invested. You're too invested. Jay-Z said there's some place. he said, uh, some places they say that I am God with the flow like my office, but they're biased, too involved with the flow. That's reality. If you're a hottie, Think about it. Yeah, if you, you bought that Popeye's if bill. If you was dumping hottie <laughs> sauce on it, you're not about to be like, yeah, man, he, he was speaking his truth. Go ahead, King. That's not happening. And on the flip side, if you one of them weird free Tory supporters, you is not about to be like, what's wrong with this man? And you <laughs> believe all. It's, it's just nonsense to think that this shit goes on in every situation. It all boils down to what Dame Dash said. The messenger is more important than the message. That's a fizz act. That's it. If we like you, man, we gonna rock with anything that go on. If like, we don't like you, yeah, man, be like, listen, oh, like, man, that's bullshit. But but we with you. <laughs> they can know it's bullshit. We with you. I'm gonna really get active. When we start talking <laughs> about that music shit because it's it just that's the way this shit go. So here's some of the social media stuff that's like some old stuff and then some present stuff because shit is starting to resurface. So there was a chick that had a viral tweet from uh, December 12, 2022, so about a year ago. Mm-hmm. Y'all keep joking about party finding out about Megan, about people Megan ha- has fucked. Have y'all ever considered he's a real nigga and doesn't care? So that tweet has aged like milk in the sun and is basically a situation where it's like, yo, we don't know these people. And there's so much trying to fill in the blanks that exist as a result of social media because everybody's a journalist, everybody's a reporter, everybody has their own POV on why, how they want to cover a situation and what thoughts that they want to put in on the situation. Mm-hmm. So it's like, y'all sitting here basing a standard of her being real ass bitch, I ain't got a lot of these niggas, I'm Megan Thee Stallion, I ain't got to fuck that nigga, better take this pussy and put it in his mouth and shut up. Yeah. And meanwhile, <laughs> she's doing the same bullshit y'all doing because she's still just Megan Pete from Houston, Texas. She going, you going to lie to some people. That's and that's a big misnomer about dating. Some people you're going to lie to. Some people you're going to tell the truth to. And sometimes you misjudge who you should lie to and who you should tell the truth yeah, to. Yeah, you you figure out like, damn, I overplayed my hand, or you figure out I underplayed, underplayed my hand. hand. I remember the poker shit. I I remember getting it all in with a set of fours on the flop, thinking, man, I'm money. I yeah. looked out there, the flop was king seven four. That nigga turned over two kings. I said, that ain't good. That ain't good. <laughs> <king. laughs> that ain't good. Like, sometimes you overplay your I remember hands. I was That's... dating this girl, and I just met her on a whim. I went to this music event at this studio down on Spring Garden. I just met her on a whim or whatever. She was tall, pretty, dark skin, whatever. I was attracted to her. We get to talking, whatever, whatever. We hanging out, you know, Weeks and weeks and weeks. I never got around, never got around to telling her I'm in a whole relationship with somebody that I live with. So by the time that I, wasn't important, yeah, that, that was a, that was yeah. a minor detail. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So by the time I get around to telling her, she tells me, "Oh yeah, I've been knew you had a girl. I was just waiting to see when you was going to tell me. I wasn't going to not fuck with you because of that." And again, it's like one of them situations. Like I underplayed my hand because mm-hmm. I could have told her from the rip, and I and I wouldn't have had to been. <laughs> <laughs> like it wouldn't have had to been none of that shit. I could have just yeah. been comfortable living my cheater fucking truth. Not to say that it's right, but she was down with whatever I was down right, with right, because right. the connection was strong enough that I'm going to fuck with this nigga regardless. Yeah. He got a girlfriend. I don't, you got to deal with that shit, buddy. And then sometimes we have situations where, you know, you, you tell a woman that you think can handle it and then she block you and cut your ass off. Right. So it's like, you never know, Straight up, but man. we all do it as human nature because when you attract to somebody, you like them, y'all connecting, y'all got the, the energies there and all of that. You're going to do what you can to preserve that situation or to make it last as long as you can. Absolutely. That's not an exclusively male or female thing. No, but to see people <clears throat> almost like, you, you ever like really sit and look at some of the lies that go on? And you'd be like, that's not true. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just be scrolling the time. Like, that ain't I'm true. a part of that lie. I know that's bullshit. I know that's bullshit. <laughs> I just bust her ass the other day. <laughs> like, Somebody today, bro, bro, I think it was Rome, was like, yo, why whenever you meet chicks, they ain't fuck nobody in months? <laughs> it'd be like, something's not up. Something's, <laughs> something's not a right. foot. <laughs> shit bad, man. <laughs> And it just be like, yeah, man, like, you know, the, the, like the shit I said at Elijah, like, 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 when do you meet motherfuckers that are like, ain't nobody, 
There ain't nobody. And there's in the a level of like, and, and when you do, it's a level of judgment attached to that shit. Like, how don't nobody want you? You and uh, the out of the whole world, ain't no nigga texting you and sending you flowers. Niggas be in jail getting all kinds of care <laughs> packages and shit. Like that's a lie. It's just nonsense to like go with and say. It's just dumb. But to see people really, really put their personal spin on every situation that happens, it's it's a bit annoying. I was talking with a girl today. It was just like, yo. I, like, y'all got to, like, remove... You know, like, a judge will recuse themselves from a case. Yeah, I'm going to talk about recusal in a minute, too. A, it's a whole other situation. I'm a little too close <laughs> to this. I just got to recuse myself. I can't give a fair uh. motherfucking judge in one way or another. And no one does that anymore. No one says, you know what? I can't look at this objectively. I can't look at this fairly. I can't give a, a, a benefit of the doubt or reasonable yeah. doubt. You know what? <clears throat> I'm just go ahead over here. Yep. It's literally like, you know, fuck that, because I was at the concert and did it and all of that shit to where you look up and people just look, they look crazy online. Yeah, you end man. up looking funny in the light. So here's some of the other social media stuff that was like a highlight that, that kind of got my attention. So this one guy said, a uh, party says you had me beef with niggas you knew you was fucking. That famous lifestyle is nasty, man. And then somebody came on top of it and said they called him a real man. I told y'all, anytime bitches call you a real man, you probably doing some whole shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then the other John nigga said, party, party is a corny nigga, and niggas been saying that when you bitches were acting like he was the black Hercules. But that track didn't really come off corny or petty. If anything, he sounded embarrassed and disappointed. Kind of what my, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, you know, this is just another powder keg moment with social media where, you know, the men are going to look at this logically. The women are going to be emotional and say, well... Who, who you don't know, like, you know, like, you don't know what was going on. It's like, none of us know. So we should all shut the fuck up. But we can't because then, you know, the Elon bucks on, on X wouldn't fucking generate if we all just didn't have a fucking opinion or recused ourselves from the conversation. So it's just another, you know, watershed moment in, uh, in hey. black culture where it's like the men's is over here and the women's is over here and they're going to meet in the middle and rumble. Like, do you remember when, like, news was, like, news? yeah. Like, when news was, like, things that went on in the community and yep. dealt with you. Like, news now is, Who, like, what, when, where, why, how? News now is just celebrity nonsense. Mm -hmm. That's news. Yeah, even on the regular like news. Like, the real news <laughs> will start to be, like, yeah, 73 <laughs> and Sunny and uh, McMill was, like... <laughs> McMill get him coats out. <laughs> you know, like, what? like, and I think back to... Even, even in our lifetimes, we were younger. We didn't know the day-to-day goings-ons of, like, Quincy Jones. No. Niggas didn't know where Quincy was at, who Quincy was talking to. Yeah. I didn't know Quincy Jones had kids till I watched Black as Fuck. I was like, <laughs> oh, shit, he got a daughter. <laughs> like, because like, you don't – think about that. You didn't – go all – like – do you think people knew the goings ons of like Duke Ellington and Hell. Etta James? <laughs> Fuck no. John Coltrane. No. What, what, how old were you when you found out Ray Charles shot up heroin? Whenever that damn movie came out. You see what I'm saying? Whereas, like, now, if Ray Charles was out now, motherfuckers would be on the ground. No, because I seen them niggas shooting dope <laughs> last night. And I just seen him doping up the night. Tell, uh, tell all. I mean it. Like, seriously. Yeah. Ray Charles fires security guard. Security guard right online. Yeah, I got the book coming out. <laughs> I seen Ray Charles and uh, who was he with? Nigga was with uh, uh, Langston Hughes. I seen them <laughs> in, in the back of the truck. Well, fucking W.E. Du Bois just <laughs> left. W.E. Du Bois. He seen them pull the dope out. He said, oh, man, y'all niggas bugging. I got to go. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, what are we Yo, doing? Straight up. But, that's, but that Yo. speaks to a larger point that I come in the motherfucking crib. I see motherfucking <laughs> Ray Charles, Hammered Hang Aaron. <laughs> like, what? Nigga? Like, that's Josh Gibson, <laughs> Negro League, motherfucking legend. <laughs> Greatest pitcher of all time. Motherfucking Bumby Johnson. Was <laughs> He's just making shit up and saying shit. But it's like, we're so over the top obsessive yeah. with these people. And these people are just, they got the same book. The same way you go on Twitter and this chick is beefing with this chick and this chick is doing this. It's the same shit. And that speaks to a larger point that American culture, because this is not just a black thing. American mm. culture is exploitative. Yeah. Like, yeah. and that's the whole thing. It's like, yo, what can we take? On a situation, it could be something straightforward and extrapolate from it in order to exploit the situation and make it bigger or give it legs or, you know, allow it to be talked about for an extended period of time and, you know, be updates and stuff like that. Or how can I profit from it? Yeah. Like, you got that shit going on right now with fucking Will Smith. Will Smith, oh. to his own detriment, has had the worst 
group of people Worst around team. him of all time. Outside of Charlie Mack. Outside of Charlie. Charlie Mack, super solid. Yeah. And Brother Bilal, when you run into Charlie Mack, <laughs> it's going to be tough. Somebody had Charlie Mack doing the, the spin in the beginning <laughs> yeah. of the Fresh Prince. <laughs> it, I don't think it's going to be good, man. You Yo, know what I'm saying? Man. And not to insinuate that Charlie Mack is on no violence. Charlie Mack is super OG. He's a he's a legend in Philadelphia and Yo, beyond. Man. He's a super dot connector, um, um, amazing guy, well-respected. Um, but he loved Will Smith. See, and y'all just be strange all the time. It just blows my mind. So to yo. see Brother Bilal go on Tasha K, which is already a destructive platform to begin with, go on Tasha K and basically tell all in the name of, like, trying to sell some book that's probably like a PDF that he made <laughs> on motherfucking Kindle is, like, nasty-ass work, man. And it's like, yo... All of this shit is in the name of like I ain't eating on some like paid yeah, and full shit. I ain't eating. And my I ain't thing, eating culture is dangerous. is dangerous. I ain't eating culture. And the reality is, is, if I was around Will Smith for thirty years, if you was around Will Smith for thirty years, if Big Dan was around Will Smith for thirty years, we will all be millionaires yeah. for all different reasons because we're all going to find our own way in order to leverage his celebrity into our financial benefit in a non-exploitative way because we're creative and we're thinkers and we're strategists. My thing is, I'm selling a book. All right, I'm going to say I saw this man do this shit, but this man, like, not trying to be funny. I don't want that book. At all. Yeah, I don't want to read that. That's a wild book. That's a wild book. (laughs) It's a filthy (laughs) book. What's the rating? Triple X? NC-17? Yeah, that's a foul book. Is that the first? What page is that on? Is that the first page? Are you leading with that? It's better books. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You got the alchemist? You got the Bible? (laughs) (laughs) The Quran? There's all kinds of books. The Torah? You got some great books out there. Legendary stuff. Yeah, man. Cat in the hat. (laughs) Filler on the roof. Fill up on the roof. Like, it's just a lot better books. So I, I don't understand that. That That's just a weird, like, fuck that shit. But when it comes to the day-to-day muck and grime of, like, urban news, it has to be something a little bit higher than than. It's all news. super low vibrational. It's I saw, really nasty. I, I saw a podcast the other day, and I'm not going to say who because, you know, fuck them. <laughs> but... I, I literally it, it 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 like it had all this traction and comments and likes and shit and it was just like it was women discussing eating ass and I'm just like <laughs> yo we we like this is where we are like what welcome yo, to 2023 like, Jack <laughs> yeah, welcome Jack <laughs> welcome do you, do you want a table <laughs> like, yeah, man. so ladies when y'all eat y'all nigga ass do he uh, be on his back with his legs up or do he get on all fours or do you tell him to scoot down to the edge of the bed. Or do he stand no. over you and then uh, he rides your face and like a surfboard? And, 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 and this is the thing. Don't get it fucked up. I get it. Yes. Yeah. Trench coat. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, what kind of, you guys, like turkey sausage? Let yeah, me get French toast, uh, fried eggs, and turkey sausage. Yeah. Three of those. Make it real simple. Yeah. That's uh that's V. That's he's a GM here at uh, at Frame. They got a new spot open up soon. No, 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 no. All right, all right, cool. We'll cut that out. <laughs> I'll cut that out. We'll cut all of that out. <laughs> he said, uh. You know me, man. I'm really important. Fresh toast, fried eggs, and turkey sausage. Three times. All right, you're the best. Yeah, I'll, I'll do turkey sausage or whatever. <laughs> All right, you gonna mess the flow up? Yeah, what, I, action! I, I wanted some pork, but I wasn't gonna <laughs> fuck the flow up. Whatever, like, but um, yeah. Back to what we were saying, man. Just end of the day, I get it. You know, we play around, we joke around, we're silly as shit at times. You know, we've had insane moments on this fucking yeah. show. Laughter, while I get it, but just we don't come to the joint every week. Like, listen, we just all right. No, we gonna do we gonna, who who got the best dick suck in West Philly. <laughs> You know, uh, what, what we got after that? Um, uh, like, it just, it just, it has to evolve yeah. uh, at a certain point. You know what I you mean? Can, you can feel the trying to go viralness in these motherfucking clips. And it's like, at this point, people are professional interneters. Yo. They understand Yo. what the fuck is going to travel, Yo. what's going to go crazy, whatever, whatever. And we do, t- and we do too. You know what I'm saying? And we do too. But we come here in order to have 
extended long form conversations around topics in order to add some context to them because we're so burnt out that we're down to 29 second clips now. And sometimes it's just a, a caption with a sound attached to it. And then that's fucking going viral. It's like we're so cooked on attention span that it's like somebody's got to do the other shit. Yeah. The thing that burns me out the most is just seeing how much bullshit goes on that. If, if you just have a brain, you know, it's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I'd be look, I'd be like, this is this is bro, dude, this is this, and I'd be like, I can't say it or call it, cause then it's like, you know, I, I, I'm a being a fun police, or, or you yeah, hating, yeah. yeah. It's just be like, there's no way. Like I saw a, a tweet that like, cause it was so viral and moving around that it wound up coming out of Twitter, and that's when it gets really ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it leaves one platform and start going to the but other one, something was said that I just thought was just like. And I saw people laughing on this shit. And, I like, even on the gram, I started unfollowing motherfuckers. Yeah. Just because it's like, yo, that shit not funny. Like, what, like, like at what point do the bid not be just like, oh, we tr- we don't give a fuck anymore? Yeah, no, it's the bid over everything. Yeah, oh. yeah. And the, and the bid over everything culture, I, I left that shit alone four or five yeah, years it's, ago. Yeah, it's the bid over Where everything. Like, we the fuck adults with responsibilities, oh, with families, with dog, bills to pay, with dog, a company that we dog, building. Like, word to Pimp C, we <laughs> some family man, and we out here getting this paper. I'm not, like, that type of shit not funny to me. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, it's just not. I get acting silly and being, you know, ridiculous, but there's a difference between being flat out ignorant, flat out disrespectful, or or crude, or just... Me and Dan was talking on the way over, when I was on my way over here fighting through traffic, and I was talking, I'm just like, yo, motherfuckers are showing you in real time around certain situations that's going on that's big in the media right now that you completely lack empathy, and at your yeah. core, you're a bad person. Yeah. Like, I have my shit with me. I'm aggressive at times. I'm fucking type A, strong personality. I'm stubborn. I can be an asshole. I can be a jerk. But at my core, I'm a good person who cares about people. Yeah, that, I, don't get it fucked up. Nobody's perfect. Again, Jay and Drake got a line for everything. Nobody's walking this earth surface says, please work with the kid. I, no one's perfect. That, I'm not saying that. But you should aim to try to be. Uh, You're going to fall short. Uh, yeah. But you should try. It's like, you know, at the end of the beginning of the year, you like, yeah, I'm going to save 15 grand this year. And end of the year, you got 4,200. <laughs> like, I tried, man. I tried. I had him in the first quarter. If you, <laughs> I had him. Spring break and shit got shaky. Shit and got I just shaky. Never they told me the hose was out. I'm buying 42. Like... <laughs> Threw my whole plan I'm off, man. Come to frame this nigga <laughs> talking about, man. We got forty two. It, it's just that's how it goes. We got nineteen forty two. Buy one, get one free. But if you start the year saying, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm not saving jack shit," you're terrible. Yeah, you're supposed to start the year with a savings goal and try to get to it. You're probably gonna fall short. Start with the try. end in mind. Motherfuckers walk outside the house every day and just be like, "I'm not trying to do anything <laughs> positive. I'm on nothing but yeah. bullshit." And I don't care which way it go. I saw a video, real quick. Lady in Dunkin' Donuts. Already you know this is going downhill. Because why are you in there? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I heard uh, that. Uh, I heard Dunkin' Donuts got this uh, cookie butter crunch frappe that's supposed to be crazy. But when you go to Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> you go to the drive-thru. Yeah. When the last time you've been in a Dunkin' Donuts? About four years. You, what you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> why are you in there? Right? She in there, she arguing with them or whatever. They messed the order up, right? She arguing with the lady who worked there, like, give me all expletives. Fuck, bit, dip, 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 dip. And the lady, like, yo, just calm down. That's what she going <laughs> yeah, just yeah. calm down. Ma'am, please. Just calm down. She like, I'll tear this motherfucker up in here. She go to pick up the tip mug. Like, you're not even having a mug with yeah. the tips. It's ceramic. She pick it up and go to throw it at the girl. They done chained the mug to the counter. I guess niggas is trying to run off with the tip mug. <laughs> so, niggas getting yanked back man. like a like a fucking dog trying to get out the fucking fence. <laughs> she she go to throw the tip mug at the girl because the tip mug is on a bungee cord. It pops up and gets her in the face. Recoil is a motherfucker. She turn around like, oh no, this bitch got me fucked up. Like, no one hit you. <laughs> you hit you. <laughs> no one hit you. You hit you. So then she pick up a pot of coffee and try to like her. The dude jumped out like, yo, since you tripping now, because like, you'll give her third degree burns. You bugging. That's 10 years in prison, you oh, fucking idiot. You don't throw oh, no hot coffee on nobody. Oh. 
But I'm, I'm watching. I'm like, that's exactly why you don't go into Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, it done got so bad in there <laughs> that they had to fucking reinsure that the tip mugs don't go nowhere. <laughs> I said. This. The tip mug was on a, you know how like you used to go to the gas station, they get a key on a hubcap. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, what the fuck? You get a motherfucking uh, pen, you got to sign yeah. something that you on 49 rubber bands. <laughs> yeah. Niggas yeah. be stealing our pens. Like, <laughs> it's a big, it's called 49 cent. Like, you got to protect the pen. Remember the bank used to have pens on chains <laughs> yeah. and shit. Don't go too far, but just sign No, that, that's, a, that's a $30 pen, man. <laughs> <laughs> that shit real. But it's like that type of shit. And, you know, I drove a bus up North Philly, so you saw it every day. Where it's like, how do you have this much energy yeah. for bullshit? Absolute bullshit. Total nonstop bullshit, man. People just like that, though, man. It's just crazy. But, yeah, man, uh, I guess pray for party and, and Pray for and party. Pray for, pray for Will. Yeah, that's, that's my go-to <laughs> on the show. Pray for I hope everyone's I, doing well. <laughs> just pray, pray for him. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to tell you. Just pray for him. Yeah, man. no, shit is wicked, man. There's other shit that people need to pray for. Are we doing this? Uh, doing what? I don't know. What's next? Uh, we took we got we got some music stuff to talk about. But I wanted to. We are we doing two shows? I don't know what the hell we doing. Um, we got enough material. Yeah, I figured we would do another show. All right, that's fine. So is this done? No. Oh. That's all I said. What else we got? <laughs> What's the runtime right now? Thirty five. Oh, all right. Yeah, we got about twenty five more minutes. Mm -hmm. Cool. So yeah, we do the music reviews a whole separate show. Yeah, we can edit this part out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of days. A lot of editing. We work today. Yeah. Some edits. So what else you got over there? <laughs> so, there was a, 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 a thing that broke the day that we was going to Capitol Hill. Going to uh, the state capitol, rather. Not Capitol Hill. But going to the state capitol. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Capitol Hill, when we go there? <laughs> That's next. You know okay. what I'm saying? Big, big, big things on the, on the horizon. So, the, there was a story that broke where Nori... Went on Talib Kweli's podcast and okay. on Ta on People's Party and on Talib Kweli's podcast is a clip from it and he's basically saying like I would have liked to seen Jay go on like a a, a hip hop platform or whatever rather than doing an interview with a mainstream platform like ABC with Gail King or whatever he's like I would have liked to see Jay come on People's Party or I would have liked to see Jay go on a uh, million dollar for game or you know with Elliot Wilson or whatever whatever and I'm like. <clears throat> The problem with what Nori is saying is, 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 is it's like fourfold. It's multiple layers of problems with what he's saying. And people in the comments agree because agree, they were basically like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So the, the, so the first problem is, if I'm Jay-Z, the minute I go on People's Party, me and I was a game, Elliot Wilson, uh, Drink Champs, Maino fucking show, whatever it is, the minute I pick one of them to go on, I got beef with, I got all, beef the with all the rest of you yeah. niggas. Because all you niggas know how to do is be negative in beef when shit don't go your way. Mm -hmm. Elliot Wilson has been on a campaign the last six months that basically any large figure that comes from hip hop that does an interview needs to do an interview with him. He was bitching about the Drake interview with the girl Bobby Altahoff, and I'm just like, fam, you already got a Drake interview. You arguably have the best Drake interview of anyone at the crib, mm -hmm. three and a half hours long, talked about everything, his history, the Pusha T shit, like everything, and you still years later like, that should have been me. And it's like, yo, that the general problem is that you can't please niggas. No. Whether you do what niggas want you to do or do your own thing and do what niggas don't want you to do, niggas are still going to be mad. Rich niggas, successful niggas, poor niggas, homeless niggas, niggas, all <laughs> y'all have in common is anger <laughs> and disdain for a motherfucker doing anything oh, just existing. It's, it's, it's like... Niggas are they, they they are niggas are incorrigible. Yo, that, yo. Yo, I was, that was the exact line I was thinking of Charlie Murphy John. You know niggas is incorrigible. Niggas that, are incorrigible. That, and, and 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 the sad reality is this. And I had this conversation, you know, recently and shit. We went through something like that last year. We're not gonna get into the specifics of it. Where someone was gonna do the show, someone else said don't do that. All that bullshit ensued. Mm -hmm. Pastor Carl. Shout out Pastor Carl. Was with us with Dave Edelman. You Our know. most prolific He's prolific been on the guest. show, and that's where I was about to go with it. Pastor Carl is my homie. We're Dallas Cowboys fans. We talk all the time. I've been through his situation. I know his wife. He know my, like, we're, we're friends. He's at my engagement part. Like, mm -hmm. that's my man. 
you and Carl have a, a relationship that goes deeper than mine because y'all know each other for 20 years. Yeah, so we was teenagers. Carl has been on this show more times than anybody. I think he has 10 appearances at this point. Yeah. Carl's, Carl was on this show one episode you weren't. He was I wasn't on even episode here. I wasn't on. Like, <laughs> Carl has been on this show more times than anybody. He's a mainstay. If Carl hit me and say, I'm going to do any show with anyone, even them, if he hits me and says, yeah, I got invited to come on so-and-so show, you know what I'm going to say? That's a huge platform, bro. Kill that junk. Yeah. What the fuck would I look like? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's my friend right. who's been at my house, at my things, <laughs> at on our show. I'm. Why would I be mad about you going on that? It, it doesn't, doesn't make any make sense. sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> but what happens a lot of times in, in, in this like life is... Rap culture is more territorial than wrestling was before Vince McMahon. <laughs> real shit. <laughs> like that's a deep cut. That's a real that's a, shit. That's a real deep cut. <laughs> Rap life is very territorial, down to the person. Mm -hmm. We just brought up Meg Thee Stallion. There are there were whole territory wars over Meg Thee Stallion. Yep, I'm not lying. Real shit from Carl Crawford to Rock Nation. That that shit is real. So we're like that just in anything. If anybody, and I, I explained this the other night about the whole goalpost thing. This is why you look up and people are so fried to where they like, you fuck with Drake. Why are you at the Push T concert? You're like, because he's going to do grinding <laughs> and new God's flow. Why the fuck would I be I here? need to hear that. I need to hear that. <laughs> Somebody, like, when that new God flow come on, I'm in it. What the fuck are you talking about? If you like Cardi, how could you possibly like the new Nicki record? It's impossible. It's impossible. If you like uh, Jay, how the fuck did you like Ether? It'd be like... No, you ain't talking, nigga. I like, you? You didn't like that? <laughs> <laughs> she was hot to death. What old nigga say? That was hot to death. Swiss Beats was producing shit left and right for Jay. Swiss Beats had us all. That nigga said, chilling in the beam, listening to Ether. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Ether was so hot that one of Jay's best friends tried to sign Nas. Irv Gotti said, yo, Nas, what you doing? <laughs> What's going on? Right, come over here with the camp. <laughs> you need a team. You know what I'm saying? Queens, baby. Like, what? <laughs> so it's like that happens a lot where people mentally can't do two things at once. Real and shit. when you see it a lot of times in our culture, it's very like, you know, and to be all the way fair, it, like that East Coast, West Coast shit, that kind of like. And that shit stuck. Yeah, but but before, I don't really remember a time period before that where it was like, even look at like Cube leaving NWA and coming out in New York and fucking with the Bomb Squad and all that. L.A. niggas was still fucking with Cube. Absolutely. And East Coast niggas embraced Cube. Like, it wasn't like no weird, oh, you left them. So, niggas, think about this. Cube left NWA and their next album, that was their first number one. Yeah. You know, like, Straight Outta Compton didn't, wasn't a number one on Billboard. Yeah, no, it took time for it took Straight time Outta Compton to, get to come to with, that, no, come to with get, it. I mean, it, it, was, it was platinum and yeah, shit, it was, but yeah. it being a number one on the Billboard 200, that didn't happen for NWA till Cube left. Mm -hmm. So the culture wasn't like, oh, you left, fuck them. To, it's like, no, we're going to listen to that, and we're going to listen to this. Yeah. When Snoop and Dre did fucking with Dre Day, it was like, oh, that shit is all that. Now put on Easy e Real Compton CDs, exactly. and that shit is all of that. But now in this weird world we live in, it's like, if you drink this, you can't possibly drink that. Yeah. Shit, we seen... Uh, this shit is a, weird. We seen Once Upon a Time fucking uh, Puff went in front of the Great Goose offices and, and was boycotting and said, don't drink the PP, drink the rock. <laughs> <laughs> they had a fucking conniption. They said, yo, we ain't in the, his, in the 80 year history of Great Goose. We ain't never seen no shit like this before. Up, Nobody man. from Kettle One ever came here and, and dissed our product in front of our I, I remember just how fun it was where it was like, you could go buy a rock aware outfit and no Sean John... Street teams was gonna beat you the fuck up. <laughs> like in this weird world you live in now, you buy Rock Aware Valor this day and age, a Sean John team, street team member <laughs> might knock you the fuck out. A fat farm van might run you the right. fuck over. That's how it is. They don't even make Valors no more. Shut up, nigga. <laughs> and at one point you just were allowed to fuck with so many different things at one time. And now it's become very, very tight. So yes, if Jay-Z goes and does this interview. That platform is like, what the fuck? If you go do that interview, that platform is like, you could co, you could bring all the platforms together. It's, it'd be motherfuckers looking like, well, why are they here? Man, listen, Academics, WAC 100, Adam 22, and I think Gillian Wallow did a show together. 
and Hassan Campbell, I think. Or it might, that might have been another show that Hassan Campbell's on. But those five for sure. All they did the whole show was argue. Yeah. Like, it wasn't nothing productive that came out of that <laughs> show. They just argued for four fucking hours. And I'm just like, all right. Like, you can't even, to the point where people don't even talk about it. They don't remember it. You couldn't even listen to it because yeah. it was just noise. Yeah. Whack 100 talking about some old shit that happened. And then Gilly got to talk about this. And I'm just like, yo, what is going on here? Like, what am I listening to? What am I watching? Yeah, I, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again for all the new, new listeners. Everybody eats, and there's enough out here for all of us, is the biggest lie in, like, black life. Yeah. There hasn't been one bigger. It's like the biggest lie since I'm happy for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When I meet a nigga and a nigga say, because you know it's enough out here for everybody, watch this nigga. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't believe that. Because if you did, you wouldn't have to say Yeah, that. put some eyes on this nigga. Yeah, keep an eye on this nigga. I know who's happy for us. You know what I'm saying? They they interact with and they fuck with the show. They come on the show. If I if they want to if, if, if they want to promote That's something, they don't one. mind paying for advertisement. They ask I, us to be a part of shit. They give us opportunities. I people said, like my brother Kabir. People like Kyrie Terrell. People like my brother Brad. People like uh, Ebony Dukes. Like we we people like uh, Morgan and Chelsea Steve. It's like we know Kevin Hart, uh, Kevin Hart and uh, Dunbar. Like we know who fuck with us. Them niggas at, at four seasons right now. I ain't fuck with them today, <laughs> man. I, I said, damn. I ain't What's going on? I'm gonna slap, slap shit out <laughs> down the line. But no, shout out to them niggas, man. But like, all, all, I, I'll say this for me. I ironically do believe that there's just, there's enough ground. I drove cross country, dog. I'm telling you, there are parts of this country that still don't have like houses on it. They don't have yeah. no plumbing. It's enough out here. And that, I'm using that as like a, 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 uh, 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 equal, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, but you, you, you're in a place like Philly that's over congested or New York that's over congested. You know, you can go like two counties over and it's like 5,000 people. Wide right? open. Like, it's just wide open. So there's always going to be a market. There's always going to be space. There's always going to be land that's available. Yeah. And that's the same in everything you do. It don't, if you play basketball right now and you think you're nice and you looking like, man, it's 450 spots in the NBA. I don't know if I'm that nice. Well, guess what? You got France. You got Italy. You got the Czech Republic. You got Germany. You got, you got China, Lithuania. And let me tell you, you can go over there and you can live like a king. Stephon Marbury had lost his sauce here in America. I promise you he has a statue in China. I promise you. <laughs> So it's like there's always going to be space. There's always going to be real estate. I do not get why that happens, and especially in podcasting. Yeah. To see it happen in, like, media, where we argue all the time, oh, man, the media make us look crazy, and the media put weird spin. Yeah, now we the media. (laughs) Now we the media, and all we do is look crazy every time we get, (laughs) every chance we get. Nobody wants to help each other. No one wants to lend a hand. And it's all real backdoor-ish. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's nasty. And it's just like, yeah, I can understand why Jay probably is just like, I'm going to go on over here. And some you. of the other problems are, Jay is a multi-billionaire. He's on the board at Square. He has the most expensive house in California history, California state history. Mm-hmm. He's a father multiple times. He's a husband to uh, one of the most decorated, if not the most decorated artists in the history of the Grammys. I'm positive Jay do not want to come here and sit on a show with you niggas and talk about shit from 30 years ago or have you answer who you think better, LeBron or MJ. Yeah. I'm sure he doesn't want to have these bullshit as low vibrational conversations because if you watch his interview with Kevin Hart, that's the type of shit yeah. that he wants to talk John about. And excellent. none of you niggas, excluding nobody, are able to have a conversation that's on that frequency. It's always going to circle back to some bullshit. Yeah. Let's call it what it is. It might be fun. It might be entertaining. But I'm not learning nothing from none of you niggas. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to keep it a buck, excluding yeah. nobody. Yeah. There's nobody in the black sphere that I'm constantly learning shit from watching their shows, excluding yeah. No you, body. Niggas get Jay and they crosshairs and then be like, yeah, man. So like, yo, uh, hot nine seven. Like, <laughs> it's just like. Man. So the platinum rolling. <laughs> like, it's just like, like, what are we doing right, here? Man. Like, like, yeah. So I, I understand why he would probably feel more. I don't want to say comfortable, but I think it's more of an aware decision. Yeah. To go do something like that. Because one, you know, the production value is going to be through the you know what I'm saying? He fuck around, has some Hulk Hogan creative control where it's exactly. like, if I don't win the belt, 
This shit not coming <laughs> <Yeah>. out. <laughs> this shit didn't happen. This is a dark happen. match. <laughs> <laughs> straight up. Hulk Hogan straight told the niggas walk into the ring. Yeah, I'm not feeling it tonight. Yeah, no. So, uh, <laughs> I, I was going to drop it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, they, they they didn't have beef uh, tenderloin tenderloin on the on the PJ. I and, was uh, gonna give him the trip, but not tonight, fellas. They said they had to write that shit on the fly. Yeah, but maybe like, maybe Monday Nitro, maybe. But that's real. So yeah, I understand it. Now what was what was the other issue they had, or you saw you saw or whatever? Oh no, it was just uh, it, it was just generally just like so you know so one it's the uh, you know Jay's status, the vibration of the conversation. Um, the divisiveness of the hip hop culture, and it's just like it's just. I don't think it's going to be a good product. Like mm-hmm. so that that just boils down to it, and it's like again, excluding nobody. I don't think that nobody is really equipped in urban. Maybe Charlemagne on a one on one. Maybe Charlemagne to really have a conversation. I'm gonna with keep Jay. it. A, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. And again, this is just me surmising. I guess that's the proper word. Is that the proper word? Mm-hmm. Surmising, uh, given my hypothesis, because yeah. I don't know Jay. Jay's one of the people you feel like you know him, but yeah. you don't. You don't know that nigga. And one thing I'll say is, to me, Jay seems almost like a bit socially awkward. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know if I want to see him in a, like a wild ass raunchy setting or on this platform where it's 50 people in the room and they screaming. How like, I don't know if I want to see that. You know what I mean? Whereas like perfect example, somebody like bleak. Bleak is funny as shit to me. All did you see the, the, the Bleak street interview? Yeah. Bleak is just funny as shit all the they time. They said, "Why haven't you had any songs with Jay?" For he said, "Cause you know I'm a bust his I'm ass. A smoke. <laughs> I'm smoking. I'm smoking. That's I'm a smoke nigga. Like he seems like like a bit reserved. And yeah. then you got to factor in the age, the accomplishments, what's going on in life. He's a it's, father. He got yeah, a teenage like, daughter. Like, you know, I'm, I don't want to come up here and talk about when I did the interview with Luke and the bitches was <laughs> finger popping each other. This is why. You know what I mean? So, you know, there are people who, Myth Bleak, uh, you know, Jim Jones, you know, Cameron, like they're that, like you could put them in anything and they're just going to be funny as shit. So I don't even know if I, if me personally, if I would want to see that. I like the interview with Gail. And I thought they got into like, when they got into him with the masters, when they talked about him with his kids being cool. And I thought it was a cool interview. Jay is, Jay has been rapping over niggas heads for 10 years straight. Mm-hmm. When he said the piece unique is sapphire, rapper's liar, I don't do sapphire. Niggas probably think he's talking about a fucking chain. Yeah. So if he's rapping over you niggas' heads, what the fuck you think you're going to do in an interview yeah. when Jay comes sit down and you want to talk about the Rockefeller breakup and Baseline Studio? Yeah. Nigga, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm out of here. You, you think Rick Ross leave it, left 85 South on some weird shit? <laughs> I'm out of here. This is never coming out. You gonna have four minutes of asking me dumb shit for yeah. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. Hold, hold on, hold on. It's Tata. Yeah, the, the Maybach outside right now. Yeah. Oh, all right, cool. all right. Hold on. In the all air and it's all right. All right. Oh shit! I'll be right there, y'all. <laughs> no, the freezer in my. They just said yeah. the freezer in the Maybach acting weird. I gotta go yeah. check this out. I'm gonna call y'all. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be right back. Just pause the cameras. They're gonna be sitting there. I can see it. They're gonna be like. They're gonna be like leave it. <laughs> leave it running. Yeah. Niggas gonna be there for four hours waiting on Jay to come yeah, back. Man. Straight up. It's, 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 just, it's just dumb. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yo, y'all shouldn't, you know, he's he's elevated to a point where certain people have elevated to a point where he doesn't deserve to be tried, potentially put in a trick bag. He's done enough. Mm-hmm. He's contributed enough to the culture. He went to the Breakfast Club. He did an interview with motherfucking Elliot and B-Dot. This motherfucker done performed everywhere. He done done everything that you can fucking do. He done conquered cor- corporate America, all of this shit. There's no level of understanding that the average person has that's going to be able to speak intelligently around his fucking partnership with Louis Vuitton, Moet, Hennessy, and what that means for his champagne brand in terms of legitimacy and distribution because all you niggas care about is what happened with you in a mill. <laughs> So I'm just going to do us all a favor and not even show the fuck I up. I wasn't even ready for that one. That's funny as shit. I was funny. I watched State Property the other day. That's hilarious, man. That's funny. So when you, so when you was in your role in State Property 1, uh, where, no, where, where no did you no pull inspiration yeah. from? Was that from Supreme or was that... It was uh, Rafael Evans, wasn't it? <laughs> like, was that Talking pig Latin, right? Like, yeah, that's funny like, as Like, no. Like, we're not, we're not doing none of this. You know what I'm saying? I love all you guys equally. You know what I'm saying? I watch y'all shows. I enjoy it because all of y'all are entertaining. Niggas got the entertainment piece. Chef's kiss. Y'all yeah. got the entertainment piece down. Y'all haven't educated nobody yet. And I'm sorry. 
that it just is what the fuck it is. Like, I have to speak freely on the matter because if niggas think that they've done enough to warrant an interview with the greatest figure that ever came from hip hop, you niggas are fucking tripping. Yeah. Because y'all aren't going to be able to clean your act up enough in order to make that a palatable product that he's satisfied right. with. It might be entertaining. It might be fun. But y'all going to push the wrong button and that nigga is out. Yeah. The pair, you're going to see a motherfucking parachute come out his back of his shirt <laughs> and just lift him out the ceiling. You're going to see that happen. So, so yeah, I, it's, it's wishful thinking, guys, but it's just I, I, the reality of it is, uh, is a no. Yeah. It's a no for, for Jay. It's a no for me. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this before we wrap up. I want to throw something out to you. Scale of 1 to 10. Because it's this week. Okay. Scale of 1 to 10. 10 being a, a complete over it. 1 being you love it. Let me come back to it. Scale of 1 to 10. How over Thanksgiving are you? Oh, 35. Okay. I 35. I've, uh, I talked to uh, my grandmother this week. We had like a two-hour conversation. I talked to my mom uh, like every day this week or whatever. Mm-hmm. We're all collectively as a unit, as a family, over Thanksgiving. You, you know when Thanksgiving comes, like you can feel it starting like six to seven days <laughs> yeah. before thing. You start getting the, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, so what you doing? Uh, next, where you going next week? Like, yeah, yeah, people start trying to put you. People are campaigning on Twitter like, I don't have no family like that. People are setting people up with families to go get plates. For That's where I was about to go next. Have you noticed the influx of Friendsgiving? Oh, yeah. So the, and I'm like, yo, people. People, people ran out of families. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Friendsgiving all month. Yeah. Friendsgiving used to be like a few days, like the Saturday before Thanksgiving. That was Friendsgiving yeah. day. Now that shit all month. November 2nd, Friendsgiving. Like, you on your November 20th come, you on your fourth Friendsgiving? Dog, God damn. Dog. The Friendsgiving thing is like an epidemic at this point. It's literally. It's t- nuts. It's taking over like a, it's, it's the nuts, whole man. culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's taking over everything. You know what I'm saying? The, uh. But I, I said it the other day, I'm like, yo, I, I don't, like, people are hitting me, like, yo, were you going for Thanksgiving? I'm like, yo, man, I might go to, like, you know, Chipotle. Yeah, like. <laughs> go the fuck back and I'm like, I don't, I don't. I'm, I'm having turkey wings for dinner tonight, yo, man. I had turkey wings. I'm like, yo, I'll be honest with you, dog. I don't even like turkey. Yeah. Like, the actual, the big turkey, I don't, I don't care for that shit. So it's like, yo, we had mac and cheese like a week ago. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't give a fuck. I got some Hawaiian rolls in the crib right now. Like, I, I don't, I don't. My thing is, I don't, I don't need to see y'all. If y'all want a great take on Thanksgiving, listen to episode 180 with Kyrie Terrell. Shout out to Kyrie Terrell. It was a classic episode. We talked about, you know, giving out. Turkeys and all that, like fucking yeah. Nino Brown ruined black culture yeah. forever because niggas see him giving out them goddamn turkeys and now they do it every year. Niggas yeah. give out turkeys, yo. Big ass, big ass turkey. pound frozen turkey. Don't get no yams. No. Don't get no collards. And I, you know, I'm just saying, <laughs> don't if get I'm, no if, corn. If I'm here, for, just turkeys. If I'm here for a turkey, yeah. I'm probably in a situation where I need a lot more. I need way more, I need than, way just more than just a turkey. I might not have an oven to cook this motherfucker. And you why to get would here? I be out here? You know, supermarkets where if you just buy enough groceries, they'll just give you the turkey. <laughs> right. How much you grow? All right, yeah, just get a turkey. Listen, I was in fucking Giant <laughs> last here, night. Just get a turkey. I was in Giant last night. They said, you have enough points for a free turkey. Do you want to redeem oh, this? Fuck no. Eat fuck shit. no. Eat <laughs> shit. Give me a Hawaiian punch. <laughs> give me a 64-ounce Hawaiian punch. <laughs> and a, like and a, a use. And a pineapple yeah. uh, Canada Dry. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Straight up, man. <laughs> Thanksgiving is just a, it's a it's weird, a, it's a it's weird. A wrap. Starting next year, I think I'm going to start vacationing on Thanksgiving. Yo. I'm going to go to like Vail, Colorado or some shit like that. Fucking go skiing or something like that. I like, I'm it. over it. You got to eat dinner at 3 p.m. <laughs> I need another dinner when I get Yeah, it's the fuck four out. your like, family yeah. calling you. Where you at? Why Yo, you ain't here yet? Right. Eat, just, shit. eat shit. <laughs> <That's why I'm laughs> like, eat shit. Eat <laughs> shit. Fuck off. That's my response to Thanksgiving, man. Eat shit, man. I'm doing something else. Straight up. I say all of that. I'm going to be at my family house. I'm th- <laughs> I say all Listen, of that. Listen, as of right I've been now, summoned already. my mom said it's a no. My grandmother said absolutely not. Oh, my you, dad is like still trying to you hold got a good on. family. Yeah, my, my dad is still trying to hold on for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? I guess he want to see all 19 of his kids. I'm joking. My dad doesn't have 19 kids. He has like seven. But uh, he want to see all his fucking kids. So he's trying to still host, you know what I'm saying, Thanksgiving. Um, so it's a maybe. It's like I got a po- I don't even have one in a possible. I got a possible. 
on Thanksgiving. So yeah, it's 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 a no for me, big dog. You know what I'm saying? Straight up. I'm gonna go ahead and, and chalk that. You I know got nothing man? else. You wanna throw something else in there? Hey man, shout out to uh Rich Shooters, Rich Smokers, I'm sorry for uh for, for my for my fit today, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can fit, visit them on the gram at Rich Smokers, it'll come right up, whatever. Based out of New York City, uh luxury streetwear, good product as y'all can see. I look so fly, so dapper as I pose for the camera. Shout out to all my people over there. You know what I'm saying? Um, again, once again, we appreciate everybody here at Frame, the whole crew for, uh, you know, allowing us to, uh, you know, be here every week, recording this great content for y'all. And most importantly, Revolt Podcast Network. I mean. Y'all not subscribed? Make sure y'all subscribe. If y'all watching this on YouTube, subscribe, like this video, share this video, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And December 17th, Holiday Hangover, TRPE. Uh, universe.com slash TRPE. It's TRPE and friends. I fucked that up. Uh, use promo code TRPE for 10, 10% off. Yeah. Peace.